So this brings us to the lesson where we learn how the motion of a rigid body or a particle undergoing rotation can be represented through mathematical equations. So to do so, let us recall the motion of a particle in a straight line. And we know that the direction of motion can be represented by a plus sign if it's moving to the right or a negative sign if it is moving to the left. So if you consider a body which is undergoing rotation about an axis, what you'll observe is that the body can either move in clockwise direction or it can move in anti-clockwise direction. And so we can associate plus and minus sign to the only two directions that are possible, much like motion in a straight line. So the notation we adopt is that if the motion is in anti-clockwise direction, we say the direction of motion is plus. And if it is in clockwise direction, we say that the direction of motion is minus. So you'd observe that here the disk is moving in anti-clockwise direction and therefore the direction of motion is plus. So the next question you should ask yourself is, if this is the case, then are the angular quantities that is omega and alpha or the angular acceleration, are these vectors? So the answer is yes angular quantities are vectors. And therefore, what is the direction of the vectors omega and alpha? So how we find the direction of these vectors is by holding the axis of rotation with right hand in such a way that the fingers curl around the axis in the direction of motion of the disk or the particle. So you can see that the disk is moving in anti-clockwise direction and the curl of the fingers is also in the same direction. So if, if this is the case, then the direction of the thumb will give the direction of the vector omega. And therefore, we'll represent the vector omega like this. And if there is angular acceleration also, the direction of that angular acceleration will also be this. Now, you'll have to get used to the idea that the direction of the vector is not exactly the direction of motion. So in rotation, the direction of vector represents the direction of the axis around which the rotation is happening. So this is a very important point and let me go ahead and write this point over here. So the next question that should pop in your mind is, is angular displacement also a vector quantity? So angular displacements, unless they're very small, cannot be treated as vectors. And the reason is that to represent something as a vector, a quantity must also obey the rules of vector addition. And one of which is to add two vectors, the order in which you add them does not matter and angular displacement fails this test. So angular displacement is not a vector quantity. So with this in background, let's write the equations of rotation for a rigid body or a particle undergoing rotation. So to establish the equations of rotation, we can draw a parallel with linear equations and without getting into the proof, let me go ahead and write the equations. So a particle traveling in a straight line has three basic equations and these are number one is final velocity of a particle can be given as v is equal to its initial velocity plus its acceleration into the time of travel. And we can write a similar equation for a particle undergoing motion in rotation. We can write that omega or the final angular velocity is equal to initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration into the time of motion. Then the second equation we have for linear motion is that the displacement, that is final position minus initial position is equal to initial velocity into the time of motion plus half into the acceleration times times squared. And we can write an equivalent equation in angular motion, which would be theta minus theta naught, which which is basically the final angular position minus the initial angular position is equal to the initial angular velocity times t or the time of motion plus half angular acceleration times t squared. And the third basic equation of a particle moving in a straight line is Final velocity square is equal to initial velocity square plus two times acceleration into the final position minus the initial position of the particle. And we can write a parallel equation 
for rotation, which would be the final angular velocity square is equal to initial angular velocity square plus two times angular acceleration multiplied by the final angular position minus the initial angular position. So you can see there's a fantastic parallel between equations describing linear motion and equations describing angular motion.